Clay County, or if you remember seeing that kind of dramatic video. But uh, the tornado possible with this is still radar indicated coming in uh, from the National Weather Service here at 659. So we're at 659 now. The, the warning goes until 715. And once this gets out of our viewing area, we'll take you back to regular scheduled programming uh, here on Action News Jacks or on CBS this morning uh, here now at 7 a.m. We'll get you to that as soon as this local threat of a potential tornado goes away here. So we Again, that's why we're on the air. Tornado warning here at 7 a.m. Resetting for you uh, until 7.15 for about 15 more minutes. And it looks like it's just a, the current warning is just a sliver of Flagler County, by the way. Just the western half right there on State Road 100 right before you enter in Putnam County. Very weak rotation, I would say, uh, right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if the National Weather Service may even cancel this early or at least take it out of Putnam County here over the next five to 10 minutes or so. But more on the way, let's check out uh, these uh, cells that are moving. Uh, so now we have a new tornado warning. So we have a new tornado warning coming in for St. John's County. So now St. John's County, we have a new tornado warning until 715. This is for that area I was watching, that southern end. This is for St. John's County. We'll switch to this one right now. This is just to the south of St. Augustine until 715. This is also radar indicated downtown St. Augustine. This is just to the south of 206. So Crescent City, that's near uh, Crescent Beach. That's near you as well. So this is a new tornado warning coming in for St. John's County. There it is, that information, including Crescent Beach. Let's go ahead and check out uh, the velocity data for us here. There is that rotation. We can kind of see it. And some of these cells have, been, have a tendency to get a little bit stronger as they get closer to the more unstable environment here with the air mass there uh, closer to the coast. So we're tracking this. Let's move this uh, here and show you a storm track before it moves offshore. Uh, this one is essentially going into Crescent Beach uh, here just to the south and in between Crescent Beach and Marineland uh, here is where this potential tornado is. Again, this is radar indicated, uh, but that's why we're on the air here now. And if you're listening to us on 104.5 WOKV, we do have a tornado warning now near Crescent Beach. Uh, this is... I would say east of I-95 now. So if you're traveling on I-95 in southern St. John's County, listening to us on the radio, if you've already passed the outlets in St. Augustine, if you already passed all the St. Augustine outlets or even going by 206, uh, you're good to go because that rotation is now east of you. It's going over US-1 right now and heading to A1A near and south of Crescent Beach. So that heavy rain right now in Crescent Beach you're hearing and seeing outside of your window, that's what we're talking about uh, here. So we are indeed on 104.5. WOKV just got the notification for that. So we're also tracking this other cell. So two active tornado warnings in our television viewing area and also for uh, uh, St. John's County, south of St. Augustine there in, uh, in for you on WOKV. So Crescent City, going back to this Putnam County warning real quick, let's check in on the velocity data. I would say the rotation is pretty much gone away. So I'm going to focus on the St. John's County cell real quick. And this one will be quick because it's gonna go offshore here over the next uh, several minutes or so. That's why the tornado warning's only until 7.15. So what we're gonna to do too, let's uh, show this on TV. I'll be tracking this on the Skycam. We're gonna turn the St. Augustine Skycam around and we're gonna to try to see if we can at least see uh, the heavy rain there going into uh, St. John's County. So it's seven o'clock now, so we are seeing a little bit of light come up in the sky, but let's turn the sky cam with each other here now. We'll go past and south of the Bridge of Lions. And again, well, we don't have enough light right now to see much, but you can see as we look off to the south and east, towards Crescent Beach, obviously dark skies here right now, but we'll be watching that over the next several minutes. So this is from the White Room in downtown St. Augustine. We're looking over the Matanzas and over closer to the coast. No lightning right now. So typically sometimes you, when you get lightning in these scenarios, it's a pretty good indica indication of a, a strengthening sun thunderstorm. But right now we do not see that. So that's good here as we watch on the First Alert Skycam network there uh, from St. John's County. All right, let's go back to this cell here. Again, downtown St. Augustine, you're not involved uh, with this tornado warning. Uh, I would say it's east of US-1 now if there is any rotation uh, still, if there is anything on the ground. Again, this is radar indicated. We'll go down to street level uh, here and showcase some of these areas where we could see that rotation uh, take place. Colonial Drive there. Uh, this is south of 206. Cypress Point Drive. Looks like it just passed uh, to your east. So if you're hearing that, that's where I want you to take your tornado precautions there near 
and south of Crescent Beach, and it's heading closer to A1A. So if you're on, uh, let's see, Sunset Harbor Way there, a little small street there off of A1A, uh, that rotation is going to be coming over your neighborhood here over the next several minutes before it races offshore and heads out over uh, the Atlantic. So we're tracking that wind now. That's the rotation that we're watching here on First Alert Doppler HD is that we can detect the spin in the atmosphere. And there's 206, so it's east of US-1 now. Uh, there in southern St. Johns County, there's A1A. Crescent Beach is right about there. Uh, so again, that's at least some good news that we are seeing that move uh, offshore here now. Uh, that'll be off in the next five to 10 minutes or so as we see it move again from west to east. You can see as we put it on uh, a loop, uh, what we call it, uh, back over the past uh, several minutes or so, you can see that kind of brighter colors kind of move into the northeast. So Crescent Beach, we'll go even closer and, and see some more streets to be aware of for this rotation uh, coming into your neighborhood here, there. Middleton Avenue, also into Green Road. Uh, we'll pick some more names here if they pop up here in a second. Um, right there at the coast. So Again, obviously, we're crossing over some bluffs and some intercoastal areas as well. Uh, so Coastal Drive, uh, you're under the gun in terms of that potential rotation here. And there it is, the reds and the green salt air drive. So an active tornado warning uh, for St. John's County, if you're listening on WOKV 104.5, uh, WOKV. It's about to move offshore here over the next five to 10 minutes. It is south of downtown St. Augustine. And then also our tornado warning for Putnam County. Uh, that cell is now moving out of the county, but I'm also going to watch these that are coming out of Marion County that are heading to the north and east and the phone's ringing, um, uh, but we are seeing uh, here these cells moving out of Marion County, head to the northeast, and this one's got some wind with it as well. I was just checking, uh, so we are watching that one. So Putnam County heads up to your southwest, the same areas, Georgetown and also Crescent uh, City. We're seeing that potential. This is that corridor that now is in our viewing area to the southern half of the viewing area that is potentially rotating here over the next uh, one to two hours too. So because this is the more unstable air as a warm front has now gone just to the north of us here in Putnam County and over into St. Johns County. And that's where we're seeing that enhanced low level spin. Okay, so we'll track that cell coming in off the Atlantic. Um, we're gonna go to, okay, traffic cam. Let's go to traffic cam guys. Can you put that uh, here behind us? Uh, this is uh, State Road uh, 206, uh, just the regular traffic cam, not max. Uh, just the regular traffic cam, DOT cameras. Um, and that's where we have State Road 206. There we go. I-95. Here's what I'm talking about. I-95 at 302. This is near uh, south of 206. So this is south of 206. So now that's at least the good news. That area of rotation is now east of that. So east of this location. Okay, back to first alert Doppler HD on Max 1. We are still seeing these are those cells I'm talking about coming out of Marion County right there, those brighter colors. So the first alert there for you in southern Putnam County there, uh, Georgetown and over into, um, say, Crescent City. Okay, let's go back to the active tornado warning here in St. John's County. See if we've got any updates with the radar beam there that going right through Crescent City in terms, Crescent Beach, uh, in terms of the rotation. So it looks like it's moving offshore now. And we take a, a look here at our First Alert uh, Skycam network in St. Augustine, getting a little bit of light now as we look off uh, to the south and east. Still can't see much, obviously, but a little bit of light coming up now, uh, showing those clouds racing off and offshore. But that's where that tornado warning uh, storm is uh, with the potential rotation here off in the distance, way down in Crescent Beach uh, here in St. John's County. So let's go back to First Alert Doppler HD. Uh, as well. Uh, showcasing Jacksonville drying out here now, but there are a few isolated showers, by the way, uh, that are continuing to develop and race off to the north and east. And then also up, up into southeast Georgia, it's pretty wet. Uh, so a wet morning commute for you. And we have more rain on the way too, by the way. Uh, it is going to be moving in. We have more showers that are well to our west. This area has to come through before we can begin to dry out late this afternoon and into the early evening. Uh, so this is our first area. Then we get some more cells developing that spread to the northeast in a more unstable environment in terms of our atmosphere south of I-10. And then we see another line that will have to come through mid to late morning through about the lunch hour and early afternoon. And then we'll see uh, things begin to calm down. So, all right, let's go back to this. This is moving offshore, so that's good. They'll likely... Uh, either cancel this one early or allow it to expire. Looks like the rotation, if there was any, 
his now going offshore here uh, from Crescent Beach. So that is some good news there. Nearer south of Crescent Beach is where that rotation is. Again, this tornado warning is technically through 715, uh, but the rotation they were watching is now offshore. Also, uh, the thunderstorm looks like uh, the thunderstorm there for uh, portions of Putnam County and Flagler County. Uh, we are seeing uh, that uh, move off to the east-northeast. Uh, and we are still... Uh, watching this area of rotation here come out of Marion County, but that is not in Putnam County yet. So again, some more heavy rain. There still is technically a tornado warning here in southern Putnam County, uh, but uh, it was for this thunderstorm, the reason they initialized this tornado warning. So we are watching again some of this area. We'll see if they began to watch that for the potential for some rotation coming out of Marion County. But again, until 715, we haven't had a reissued tornado warning yet. Uh, so again, the corridor, we'll be watching these uh, coming across I-75 and then heading off to the north and east. There's St. Augustine. Uh, so it's right here is where the thunderstorms that will maybe even try to lift a little bit farther to the north as a warm front does so too. Uh, so that's where the most uh, warm, unstable air is. Right now in Jacksonville, we have temperatures in the 70s. They're in the mid to upper 70s, though, as you head farther south uh, from uh, Jacksonville. I'll show you here in uh, just a second. We have temperatures uh, in Putnam County in the mid to upper 70s to near 80 degrees. So there definitely is a frontal boundary here, and it's right about there. We're at 68 in Lake City versus 79 in Palaka. So here comes that more unstable air, the science behind what's going on, and that can aid in the low-level spin here with that frontal boundary with some of these even shallow showers uh, that we're seeing. It's not a typical plain state tornado that you're seeing. We're in the 60s up in southeast Georgia with that rain-cooled air there uh, as well. So again, we still have a tornado warning uh, in effect for uh, St. Johns County and Putnam County until uh, four more minutes. And again, the the, the area that we're watching that has the rotation is now shifted offshore. So I'm almost inclined, unless there's a reissuance of the tornado warning, guys, to get ready to go back to uh, regularly scheduled programming uh, here on Fox 30 and then back to CBS this morning on, um, on, on CBS 47. So uh, we're getting ready to do that, preparing to do that here in the next uh, minute or two. Uh, but again, we'll just track this again. There goes that shower just to let you know in Crescent Beach, the... Heaviest weather has now gone off to your northeast with that particular cell that is moving offshore from Crescent Beach. And another one we're watching here that went into Flagler County. Uh, we are still seeing that uh, it's out of the view, out of the warning now. So this one is until 715. I don't know if the National Weather Service is just watching this one too, uh, or we'll see an update uh, here over the next uh, several minutes or so because that storm is now outside of the warning, and I don't see any additional guidance coming in uh, from uh, the Weather Service. So uh, we're watching this one uh, here. We'll let you know over the next uh, several minutes if we need to get back on for that particular cell. That's what we're watching here for you in the Action News Jack's First Alert Weather Center. This is, we've had three total tornado warnings so far the past several hours, one overnight with myself and Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish, and now these two. But the good news is uh, we are drying out in Jacksonville, but we do have some more weather to go through the day today, and we'll continue monitoring these cells and jump back on here on Action News Jax. Wanted to check in quick with uh, Maritza Ross in the Action News Jax First Alert Traffic Center. She's got some uh, wet roads and a lot of accidents out there as well, Maritza. Yeah, unfortunately, with all this heavy rain, all this wind, all this stuff that you're tracking all morning long, that's caused quite the scene all over town. St. John's County, Duval County, also Nassau County, throughout our viewing area. I-95, this is just near the airport, did have a crash there, and it's a single vehicle crash, so we're seeing a lot of slipping and sliding around the roadways. Congestion on Bowden another crash on Blanding Boulevard, and then just another view just off of the ramp there. These are the crashes that are happening all over town as we zoom in closer to Duval County. Well, let's go ahead and take it to St. John's County. That's where we had that heavier rain. Florida State Road 16, also on County Road 210. As we take it north over to Nassau, we got that crash on Sadler Road and then also Pecan Park Road. So if you're heading out to the airport, this is the kind of day that you want to give yourself a lot of extra time, and it's really just to get there. Look at the uh, backup here on I-95. This is due to a crash right off the ramp, also north I-95 as well, around the Beltway just before the Buckman Bridge. We have that crash on Blanding, also just popped up on 103rd Street, which is out over here towards the First Coast Expressway. So there's a lot going on on all of our roadways. I almost forgot the one on JTB and San Pablo, but your drive times for that one are still looking Okay, you're still looking at under 10 minutes as you head towards A1A. That's the latest from the Safe Touch Security First Alert Traffic Center. 
All right, now that the tornado warnings have expired, CBS Mornings will resume on CBS 47. We'll continue tracking these storms and continue your local news coverage on Fox 30. Live this morning, this is a Fox 30 Action News Jack's first alert weather day. Well, we have you covered this morning. We have since we hit the air. Rain, storms causing a lot of headaches on our roadways. Just take a look at the gridlock here. We have your drive times and what to look out for as you leave home to hit the road. Well, let's just say give yourself extra time. There's po- ponding out there Certainly. on the road, and you have a lot of company out there as well. Welcome to Action News Jacks on this messy Thursday morning. I'm Don Lopez. And I'm Phil Amato. Our First Alert weather team was the first to tell you yesterday at 8 o'clock in the morning that today would be a First Alert weather day. I want to get right out to Action News Jacks Megan Moriarty right now. And she is in the First Alert storm tracker near I-95 North, just past of Butler Boulevard. Now, Megan, you have seen some just wet roads out there and reasons why folks need to slow down and again give themselves extra time. And Don and Phil, we're seeing a lot of those slowdowns on the roads that Marisa was talking about. I want to show you we are approaching uh, the exit for University Boulevard earlier. She did approach a or give word about a um, crash there earlier and we're seeing the slowdowns. Apparently we had a little issue with uh, Megan's audio there, but she's seen it all pretty much this morning since about uh, 5 o'clock since she's been out on that storm tracker down in St. John's County, St. Augustine, raining a lot, mm-hmm. and now in that area, not too much, but it's just on and off. That's much, right. The morning. And we have seen a long list of accidents mm-hmm. throughout the morning as well. So, again, that's a reason for you to leave early. And we'll have more continuing coverage on this First Alert Weather Day straight ahead. It's 7-16. Monday marked 100 days since Jacksonville Mayor Donna Deegan took office. One of her big accomplishments was securing the most unanimous, the first unanimous vote for a city budget in 15 years. We sat down with the mayor to discuss what she's looking forward to after passing this milestone. I felt that my priorities for the city in terms of infrastructure, in terms of health, in terms of economic development were very aligned with what council would want to do. And as it turns out, we all want to accomplish a lot of the same thing. There is no shortage of challenges right now on the horizon. The most high profile is the stadium renovation deal with the Jacksonville Jaguars. But the mayor also wants to take a look at the possibility of moving the jail, which is on prime real estate, prime property, we've told you, on the riverfront. And she also says improving literacy is a part of her plan to reduce crime. We're going to include the community with, with a whole program of, of uh, 20 minutes of reading a day. We're going to have a competition. We're going to have people get involved um, for prizes and things to get it kicked off so that people get focused on it. Mayor Donna Deegan has also made a point of speaking to and hearing from the community as a part of what she calls community conversations. And she says that what stands out the most is that issues like potholes and maintenance are top of mind for local families. Let's go to Garrett. Now, another tornado warning, Garrett. Yeah, I just had one issue. We were telling you about those thunderstorms uh, just to the south and west of you in Georgetown. Uh, Meteorologist Corey Sima is here in the First Alert Weather Center as well with me now. And so uh, we are uh, tracking this tornado warning for portions of Marion and Putnam counties until 745. So right now we're at 718. This goes until 745. These are these thunderstorms. Again, I was talking about that corridor of strong storms. And this is one that looks even a little bit more impressive than the one we saw previously. Crescent City right there, Georgetown here. We're seeing this again moving to the east-northeast around uh, 30 to 40 miles per hour uh, here with this particular uh, tornado warning. Uh, and there is, shortly thereafter is Flagler County, but it's not involved in the tornado warning here uh, right now. So this is right near 19, just to the southeast of there, or east of it actually, uh, in Marion County. And this is a way away from our, our radar site here in Jacksonville. So this is why we're seeing some of these purple colors here. It's part portion of the radar data. Uh, so we're seeing this area. You can see a little bit of a, a little bit of a hook uh, there that we typically look for in terms of some rotation here. So uh, let's put this in motion, Corey, uh, at least a couple of times to show us the motion of it. It is kind of lifting to the east, northeast, kind of more east than northeast uh, with this one. And that's the area that we're watching here. If it were to move into, say, Crescent City, by about 734. So 734 for you in Crescent City if 
if it does hold together by then. Hammond before that at 729 and the Middleton Verde Elementary School area by 734 if it holds together there. So we are seeing that here, maybe an enhancement uh, with the lake there. Uh, but uh, we are seeing some of the street names here. Georgetown, it's just uh, to your near and just to the south of Georgetown with that rotation that we're looking at right here. So we could even see a water spout, quite honestly, uh, go over the lake. Uh, but we are seeing uh, there Crescent City, Georgetown, Denver Road. These are the areas that are involved in this tornado warning. Again, we were showing you this thunderstorm a few minutes ago when we were just on for our tornado warnings there in St. John's in Putnam County. So now we're back on the horn here uh, now. Uh, and, uh, guys, we, I guess we also need to be back on CBS 47. Let me know when we're uh, getting that on as well or run the crawl there, too. Uh, so we are seeing here Otis Stone uh, over there in Flagler County. You're not under the uh, tornado warning. Uh, you do not... Uh, you're not under the tornado warning there on I-95, so that's some good news. But I want to welcome you in. If you're uh, just joining us now on CBS 47 Action News, Jackson First Alert Meteorologist Garrett Biedenbaugh alongside meteorologist Corey Sima, uh, we are now tracking another tornado warning uh, for southern Putnam County. And also, if you're watching in, on the antenna in Marion County, northeastern Marion County, uh, this is going right near Georgetown. Uh, and moving off to the east-northeast into Crescent City, potentially. This is a radar-indicated tornado, potential tornado. Uh, so uh, we are going to track here with the velocity data, see if we can get a better image here uh, with it. Uh, and maybe we, we even try to shoot it from um, Melbourne or uh, Tampa to see if we can get a little bit of rotation here uh, over the next uh, several minutes or so. So we'll be watching this. And it's heading closer to 17. Uh, and so 17 is once again under a tornado warning. Uh, so we're watching that. Uh, and uh, this is the area that we're seeing that potential rotation here. So you can see the different radar sites we're going through right now. I'm trying to show you different locations of what it looks like, depending on how far the radar site is. This is actually in an area, especially Marion County, that's kind of in a radar dead zone in some spots, trying to get that corrected here, but it takes federal funding. Uh, but we are seeing uh, here the, uh, this is from what looks like Moody, Moody Air Force Base. This is all the way in Georgia, so we're not able to see much uh, here with that one. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's where we're seeing the, the radar data. We'll just go back to Jacksonville uh, here and show that as it moves off to the east-northeast here, around 30 to 40 miles per hour. Uh, meteorologist Corey Sima, I want to bring him in here to the coverage as well. Uh, Corey, anything you're seeing uh, there uh, behind the scenes with this area of rotation that we're now tracking? Yeah, Gary, you just talked about it. We're trying to shoot from different spots. There are some areas in northeast Florida and even up in southeast Georgia that are kind of in a hole when it comes to radar coverage. And this is one of those spots. We have first alert Doppler HD that we can see everywhere, but the, the, the radar beam shoots up into the atmosphere. So the farther away you get from the radar, it's a little harder to see. We're kind of in one of those spots right here in Marion County and Putnam County, at least from a traditional or normal radar perspective, we're looking at the rain here. And you can see the heavy rain where we have the oranges and red colorings. That's normally what we show you when we talk about First Alert Doppler HD. And right now the area of concern is back here along the Putnam and Marion County line just north of the lake, southwest of Crescent City and approaching Georgetown. That's why we have a tornado warning that's in effect until 7.45 a.m. That is still about 20 minutes away. The National Weather Service issuing this just a few minutes ago. So uh, we're watching it very closely. This is southern Putnam County, south of Palatka. Palatka, you are not in the tornado warning. The, the official warning box is it's close to you, but you are not included in that. Crescent City and Georgetown are the only spots included in that. This, this is a, it, it just, it kind of looks like a blob. So we're, we're looking for, like Garrett mentioned earlier, spots that, that kind of show a little curve or a hook. And at least right now, we don't really have that. This uh, shower or, or heavy shower is still capable of producing a tornado because of all the ingredients that Garrett has been talking about. It's a lot, it's a lot warmer and more humid down here south of I-10, uh, well inland in northeast Florida. And that's why conditions are a little more favorable. That's why we have a tornado watch that is in effect. So like we've been talking about, a tornado warning is in effect. I'm going to go down to street level mapping, and we have Highway 17 in Crescent City. There is Old Highway 17. There is Crescent Lake Shore Drive, Pomona Park. Uh, you're included in this tornado warning. If you know somebody who lives down here, even if you don't, 
Never hurts to give them a phone call. Make sure that they are protecting themselves, their families, and their property. County Road 308B. We have Cisco Road. Wallaca, you're not included in this tornado warning. The, the, the official warning is very close. I think the, the area of concern or where we uh, could see a tornado, potential tornado, will stay to the south of you. But we're watching it very closely. Union Avenue. Now we're talking about Crescent City and Highway 17. Uh, there is Junction Road, Georgetown Denver Road, Georgetown Shortcut Road, and then County Road 308, and then there is Georgetown. The, the potential area of concern is this area of the red right here that is just to the south of Georgetown. We're, we're in kind of a hard spot to, to see really good radar data. As I switch it to velocity, uh, kind of what I was doing earlier, actually, we're, Garrett, we're starting to get some better velocity data in. Yeah, I was just looking at that as well here. Uh, we are seeing that near Georgetown here. It looks like uh, we have some higher uh, velocity amounts here in terms of the wind speeds just to the north of Georgetown now. There's Crescent City, Crescent Lake nearby, of course, uh, and Lake George to the south. Uh, but we are seeing here this wind of 40 to 50 miles per hour being detected on first alert Doppler HD. So we're getting a good radar beam here through this now, uh, through this thunderstorm. And this is right on County Road 309, just to the east of there. And Again, U.S. 17 is an area you don't want to be driving here over the next several minutes because we are going to wait for that area of ro potential rotation here. Uh, you may even see a lowering on the cloud base uh, that indicates that's where we're watching for the rotation here. So again, into Huntington by about 730, Crescent City Junior Senior High School. Uh, under the tornado warning right now. So hopefully uh, if you're taking your uh, folks to school uh, here over the next little bit in the su southern Putnam County area, uh, we are seeing this tornado warning right now. Uh, 60 miles per hour being detected on first alert Doppler HD there in those bright shades, just elevated perhaps just a bit off the ground. But Georgetown, Denver Road under the gun in terms of the tornado warning here now as well. Uh, so that's where we have our active tornado warning. The classic radar you're used to seeing. There's that area of rotation now. It's kind of, it's almost like uh, this cell has taken over uh, here uh, with the potential area of rotation. We'll still watch this here over, uh, over uh, Lake George and then turning into the St. John's River. Uh, but uh, there is that little Q there, curly Q kind of uh, hook there that we're watching. That's where that wind is, and that's what's heading closer to Crescent City right now. There's Crescent Lake right there. There's State Road 100, and this again is moving to the east northeast at 40 plus miles per hour, according to the National Weather Service here in Jacksonville. So we're watching this with a radar beam from Jacksonville here for us. That's why we're on the air on CBS 47 at Fox 30 Action News Jacks, our area of responsibility here for you in southern Putnam County as well. Uh, so this is just for Marion and Putnam counties looks like the highest uh, the highest winds have now shifted out of Marion County if you're watching us over the air and over an antenna or maybe even on our first alert weather app uh, streaming uh, coverage there uh, it's the wind is out of Marion County now in terms of the cell we're watching for this tornado warning so no reports yet still radar indicated but there's those winds Corey let's zoom down to street level mapping there uh, with the highest winds we're tracking northeast of Georgetown in the Georgetown area right now Do you want to point out there are there are two areas of circulation here and Garrett just hit on this one minute ago but where you see the blue coloring due west of Crescent City this is the primary circulation and we're really starting to see that now with the dark Darker green colors there. There is another circulation here down to the south, though. This was what originally prompted the tornado warning. This is south of Georgetown and southwest of Crescent City. But like Garrett just said a couple minutes ago, this northern circulation, which isn't that far away, but that has kind of taken over as the dominant one. And it, it looks like this is not weakening, Garrett. It looks like it is strengthening. Yeah, that one is about 60 plus being detected on first alert Doppler HD in terms of the wind velocities that we're tracking uh, here for you there with our storm winds. We bring it back here to the wall. Uh, we are seeing that uh, Crescent City, I want you to be taking your tornado precautions here. We got 65 mile per hour winds now detected on first alert Doppler HD. Again, some of this is elevated. Some of this is the radar beam hitting it higher up in the atmosphere because it's so far away from our radar site on the north and west side of Jacksonville. But if you're on County Road 308 there in southern Putnam County, west of Crescent City there on the map, there's Crescent City, there's 17, Junction Road, Union Avenue. I want you to be taking uh, your tornado precautions because this is, at the very least, perhaps some high winds heading in. Just got an update now. It's moving to the northeast, crossing County Road 308, approaching Union Avenue now. 
Again, this is moving at 40 plus miles per hour here, the way it looks now. Old Highway 17, and then there's 17, and Union Avenue. This is where we're going to be tracking here. Uh, and, and Corey, why don't you take the radar data off just so we can see kind of the land uh, here just to showcase what we have here. There's Union Avenue. There's Crescent Lake. So this is almost at Crescent Lake now. Uh, so we're watching that. This is the area we're watching. We'll zoom down and we'll see what pops up here uh, just near Old Highway 17 south of uh, old Highway 17 there, even Paradise Shores Road uh, there on the lake. We're seeing that uh, potentially to be an area where the rotation could go. And again, a lot of uh, trees and some rural areas here as well in southern Putnam County. Uh, but that's where we're watching that area of rotation here right now. Still, as far as we know, not a confirmed tornado. We are watching this. Let's check the uh, debris signature maybe real quick just to make sure uh, nothing's flying around down there. Uh, looks like we're good to go in that department here. Don't see anything that suggests to me that it isn't just purely rain right now. So that's some good news. Still radar indicated potential tornado. There's that first area we were watching south of Georgetown here going over Lake George and now heading off on the land once again. It's out of the question to have a brief water spout there. And then over into west of Crescent City going over Crescent Lake and approaching uh, State Road 100 uh, even into Flagler County. Not in a tornado warning right now, but with that strengthening cell, I continue to be watching this and be ready to act there if you're in western Flagler County, just in case you become under a tornado warning where we just got an update now, just Putnam County, so as expected, Marion County not involved uh, with this and still being indicated as radar indicated with the uh, tornado warning here now. That's why it's flashing. We just got an update there's that wind that Corey's driving the radar for us here on First Alert Doppler HD on a First Alert weather day. We told you this area south of I-10 could have some strong storms here today and the potential for an isolated tornado. And here we are. It's right over there. Uh, that's at 308, if my memory uh, serves me correctly there, and Union Avenue uh, we're watching there. So County Road 308. Uh, there and Union Avenue. And what's this road right here? Let's zoom in, the, the one heading north-south. Uh, that is Huntington Shores Shortcut Road. Okay, Huntington Shortcut Road uh, there. So that's where the wind, the highest wind is right now with 50 to 60 miles per hour heading to Union Avenue. Again, we were looking at this on the maps. This is a lot of trees right here. So that's at least good. Uh, but then we go into Crescent Lake, and that could very well be a water spout as it crosses the lake too. So uh, something we'll be watching, and if you see any reports of any damage, let us know after the fact. Uh, we'd love to know that and see if anything is actually on the ground. Looks like, did we just get an update, uh, Corey, with the I radar? Put the back on. Okay, you just put the warning back on. Okay, so this is the other area of broad rotation that we were originally on. Uh, this is Georgetown Denver Road, uh, maybe some gusty winds, if not uh, an area of rotation at the base of the cloud. You'll see it coming down from the rest of the clouds and see it rotating a little bit there. That's what we call a wall cloud. Uh, and and then over into Junction Road right now, not rotation there for you, but some gusty winds perhaps. Okay, so there's looks like it's weakened somewhat. We've gotten uh, the radar beam updating here now with our latest update. And we have seen that strongest wind, it looks like, go away over the past uh, several minutes, Corey. Yeah, so Garrett, you you look for the, the red and the green to, to get really bright and hot. The the brighter the colors are, the higher the wind. So we, we have the legend at the top of the screen here. The green coloring, that is wind toward the radar. In this case, we're looking from Jacksonville, which is way up there. So the, the green is toward, the red is away from the radar. And the, the brighter the color, when you go from the green to the blue and potentially even the white, that is really high wind. And then with the red, as you move from red to more of a peach and then a yellow coloring, that is really high wind. So you're looking for the red and the green to get bright and really close together. And at least a couple of minutes ago, we had the green coloring that was really getting bright. It's still a little on the bright side here as it approaches US 17, just north of Crescent City proper, but it's not as bright as it was. We still have some area of wind on the back side of that that is moving away, so this may indicate a broad rotation, but it still looks pretty weak, at least to us, Garrett and I, in the First Alert Weather Center, but it's still enough for this tornado warning to continue. The National Weather Service has not seen enough to let this go away. 
And yeah, we do have a pair of circulations. There are two of them, one just northwest of Crescent City and one just east of Georgetown and southwest of Crescent City. So both of these are approaching Highway 17, the lake, and then eventually western Flagler County and Garrett. We, we got to watch this for southern St. Johns County as well. If it continues on the current track, it may just gray southern St. Johns County near I-95, potentially uh, marine land and spots around there too. It's not there yet. It's something we'll keep an eye on, though, over the next half hour. Yeah, and cells to the south and west of this, too. Let's go ahead and give a broad view of what's going on here. If you're just joining us on CPS 47 at Fox 30 Action News, Jax, we have some dry hours here now in Jacksonville, but some more rain is on the way later this morning and into the afternoon while we're still seeing rain in southeast Georgia. But with these cells to the south of Jacksonville, that's where we've seen the more unstable air mass that's been allowed to kind of rotate a little bit with some of these uh, storms. We also have a tornado watch, in effect, near here in south of uh, I-10 through at least 9 a.m. We may see an extension of time in that, uh, but we'll watch that for you and showcase you the latest data. So we do have storms that are going all the way back into the Gulf of Mexico uh, here that's uh, kind of lining up here. That's where we're seeing this uh, kind of axis, I've been calling it, of uh, stronger cells that are rotating. We're even seeing a few cells pop up in Union County. We'll watch those here as that warm front lifts to the north. There's another area we have to go through before it's all said and done here late morning and into the early afternoon active tornado warnings down to the Gulf Coast as well. So this is that area of the strongest storms where the environment is uh, good enough for some of these potential tornadoes and some of these cells to begin to rotate. On I-75, we've seen some, uh, and over into Clearwater, we've seen a water spout come on shore as a tornado as well and cause damage in the Clearwater, Florida area, uh, back closer to Tampa. Uh, and uh, we haven't seen any damage reports in Jacksonville. That's at least some good news. We have had some damage reported in the Palm Coast area that may have had a weak tornado, at the very least some uh, sustained winds that were gusty at times. Uh, there with a the thunderstorm coming uh, offshore. So uh, we will watch that outside of our viewing area. But for us in Jacksonville right now, we are dry, not under a tornado warning. In our viewing area, though, we have Putnam County under a warning. So Southeast Georgia, just some heavy rain from Waycross over to Brunswick to Woodbine, Georgia. Even a few cells that will redevelop to the south and west of Jacksonville that will stream to the north and east. As we zoom back into Flagler County and also southern Putnam County, there's those cells we've been watching and why we're on the air here for a tornado warning uh, until 745. Right over Crescent City with one of those cells and also one to the north that is now crossing into Flagler County. So if you're on State Road 100 there in uh, Flagler County, watching us. That's where we're seeing a little bit of that wind signature. Also, this one now a little bit more pronounced, I would say, uh, there uh, with the rotation near and south of Crescent City. Carrier Road, you're under a tornado warning. I would uh, take shelter here right now. Turn us up with the volume and get in your tornado safe space just in case this is beginning to come down. And now we have a new tornado warning uh, that was just issued for this cell and the other top one, I suspect, uh, from the National Weather Service. This one, uh, Corey, goes until... Uh, see if we will pop it up here on the on the radar if, if we don't know yet. Uh, this is uh, moving to the east northeast at uh, 40 plus miles per hour. So this one's until eight. This is uh, for Flagler mainly and eastern Putnam County. So it's this cell right here and that one as well. So they're uh, for the National Weather Service in Jacksonville indicating that potential rotation and also this one near Crescent City. So Crescent City, a couple of more minutes of a tornado warning, and then that cell will be out of there, and we'll be able to return you back to regular programming as of right now uh, with our current setup uh, with the thunderstorm. So Crescent City, this is your tornado warning, a new one. It's technically through 8 a.m., but this area won't be in your neighborhood by 8 a.m. It'll be to the east, so we'll track that here over the next 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even before that, as it moves to the east. Crossing 17, so uh, right there on the map where it says Crescent City, if you're south of that and on 17 either side of that, that's where we're seeing that potential rotation. Corey, let's zoom down. Uh, here to go to street level mapping here, Junction Road over to Georgetown, Denver Road, Clear Lake Road, Old Mail Route Road uh, there, some uh, areas that we're watching here for this potential rotation. Again, still, uh, as far as we know, a radar indicated uh, tornado, potential tornado there, so at least there's some rotation being picked up uh, with these reds going one way with the raindrops and the greens going the other way, and so that's how we're uh, able to determine that there's some rotation here, Corey. 
Yeah, and Garrett, these are just little pixels. Think about the, the TV screen or your phone screen that you're watching on. These are, these are individual pixels of the wind. And right now, we just have a couple of them that, that do indicate rotation. But uh, Garrett, you know, chime in if, if, uh, if, if you want to. This looks to be the most impressive yeah. of this storm. So we have the red and the green that are right next, to, right next together. We don't have a lot of the red. We have some of it. And then we have some of the green right here. Denver Road, Junction Road. There's US 17, Crescent City proper. Uh, if, if a tornado drops, this is where it is going to be, and it, it could happen at any time. So you need to be in your place of safety if, if we have been shouting out any of your streets. Old Highway 17, uh, right next to US 17, up into Crescent City. I'm going to go down a little bit tighter as well. Uh, around Junction Road, there is a Reed Avenue. We have... South Prospect Drive, uh, scrolling up a little bit more. Again, this is Crescent City, uh, Grand Rondo East. Okay, it looks like we got a radar update, so I'm going to zoom out. And uh, yeah, Gary, it looks like it, it weakened just a little bit. So the storm has kind of ebbed and flowed. It's kind of cranked up, and then it's uh, tried to wound down a little bit. But the rotation is still there. It is on the weak side. Yeah, and it's about to cross over Crescent Lake as well. So it could become a water spout too uh, here. Crescent Lake right about there. Uh, you can see the top of it there over underneath the radar. Uh, so we do have Crescent Lake. It's coming up on near Crescent City. Uh, so it's now north of Lake George, and that is heading off to the east-northeast uh, here. Um, uh, we are seeing that move off towards Bimini area by 750 or so. And again, this will be moving into Flagler County here over the next several minutes. Uh, and uh, we'll be uh, letting our folks that cover this area and the Orlando market take over here uh, for you guys if you need to switch over. But uh, for uh, Putnam County until... 7.45 to 8 o'clock here. We'll be uh, done with this cell here in Putnam County over the next five minutes, likely. Uh, but we are dry in Jacksonville in a lot of spots. But this is why we're covering this right now in our area of responsibility, our counties that we cover here in Putnam County. This is south of Palatka, so you're good to go in Palatka and even Satsuma and Wallaka too. You're just, the storm is just to your south. But there's Palatka, downtown Palatka there, St. John's River going into Lake George, Crescent Lake right there. This is where that rotation is coming in now, updating. Again, this could become a water spout if it is anything, uh, and at least the rotation is moving over Crescent Lake right now. Uh, east of Crescent City on 17 there, this is weakening it looks like at least, so that's some good news. We're not seeing as bright of colors here where we were earlier at 50 to 60 miles per hour with those pixels and uh, being detected on First Alert Doppler HD. Again, a First Alert weather day today. We gave you the First Alert on this for days and uh, declared a First Alert weather day yesterday morning about this time. Uh, for today because we knew there was going to be some heavy rain and even the potential for some strong thunderstorms that could produce even some gusty winds or an isolated tornado. We had that tornado watch until 9 a.m. and it may get massaged a little bit from the Storm Prediction Center or even our local National Weather Service office in Jacksonville. Some of it's been shaved off from the Tampa area to some parts of the I-4 corridor with some of those thunderstorms shifting a little bit north. Uh, look at the temperatures though. Uh, we're at 77 Palau. 73 up at the International Airport and 60s up in southeast Georgia. So you can kind of make out where that warm front we've been tracking is. And this will continue to shift to the north and give us the warmer, more unstable air through the State Road 16 area and then up into, uh, say, Clay County and eventually southern Duval. So again, this is where we're tracking for you here on First Alert Doppler HD, that tornado warning, eastern Putnam County. Uh, here uh, today. We'll be wrapping up our coverage here in a few minutes or so since that uh, area is moving out of Putnam County in terms of back to the newscast and then back to CBS Mornings here on CBS 47. So uh, there it is. We'll zoom in again. Just showcase it here as we zoom into eastern Putnam County, Crescent City. There's that area of rotation moving uh, to your east and crossing into Flagler County now. So there is that rotation right about there over the lake heading east and crossing into Flagler Agler County, State Road 100, near and south of that. Also, there was some weak rotation north of that. Looks to be weakening here now. So a broad view we'll give again 
before we wrap up our coverage here as that cell is now moving out of our viewing area. Uh, there are still some heavy showers in southeast Georgia. I-10, a lot of dry time, still some wet roads. We've had multiple wrecks here this morning that uh, Maritza Ross has been tracking for us in the First Alert Traffic Center. And also a lot of rain, two to three plus inches of rain since midnight in many neighborhoods. And there'll be more cells we'll watch here that could potentially begin to spin too. So we'll jump back here on TV if we need to. And our uh, other batch of rain and thunderstorms crossing through Tallahassee now, that'll be here in the uh, mid to late morning time frame. And then we'll finally begin to see just a more isolated shower or two behind that and beginning to dry out. So with that cell now moving east of our viewing area into Flagler County, we'll uh, go back to our regular scheduled programming here in just a second. But first, wanted to toss things over to our news desk, uh, Phil Amato and Ms. Don Lopez. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Garrett. Well, now that that tornado warning's almost up here, CBS Mornings will resume on CBS 47 for those who want to watch that. But we'll continue to track the storms and we'll have back to your local news coverage too as well on Fox 30. We'll be right back.